started here. Um, okay, well, great. Um, as I have mentioned before, thank you all for joining us. We are going to be learning all about annotate today. Um, so, but we're going to get started first. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of what feedback is, um, maybe some of the characteristics or traits of feedback, uh, and then we'll go into some of the annotate tools that you can use to help you with feedback. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with some final questions um, and hopefully a little live demo if we need it. Um, however, you know, do feel free to uh, hop on the mic and ask questions if you have them or post them in the chat. Um, you know, I do my best to monitor the chat. Um, sometimes I don't get to it right away, but a lot of times I, um, you know, but I'll get to you eventually. Um, or, if, you know, if you raise your hand, a lot of times I can hear that. Um, if I'm, say, demonstrating in another window and I can't see the actual um, hand raise, I can hear it usually, which, you know, again, we're a small group, so feel free, just hop on the mic, ask a question. Um, but if you're not talking, please remember to keep your mic muted to cut down on the background noise. So um, first off, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start about what is feedback. So, um, you know, well, actually, I forgot to throw my poll up. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Sorry, give me a second here. Actually, I'm going to hop back one more. I am not the fastest typist. And if I have some typos, I apologize. But uh, just take a second and think about what um, you think feedback is. And we're gonna, if you wouldn't mind, just Pick one of these that you feel is most responsive or best describes feedback. I hope I didn't blow it by advancing my slide too quickly. All right, thank you. Ooh, looks like we're all leaning towards performance assessment. Cool. All right, we're gonna move on. Um, yes, I I agree. Um, feedback is performance assessment, right? Especially, um, you know, as far as instructors are concerned, right? You create uh, some sort of uh, learning activity for your students and then you assess them on their performance. Um, yeah, I agree. That is one element of feedback. Um, another element, right, is sort of that constructive criticism element. Um, you know, we're trying to, we're, we're seeking improvement, I guess, from our students, right? We don't, well, you don't expect perfection, but you do expect some improvement. And towards that end, you do occasionally have to offer some constructive criticism. Um, you know, we obviously, when we do this, we try to be as positive as possible, but you do sometimes have to point out um, some errors or mistakes. Um, but um, honestly, the and the next one here is sort of this idea of this interactive dialogue. Um, and honestly, I, this is kind of a little bit of a trick question because really criticism is sort of all of these things. Um, uh, in, their, in their 2019 study, Osberg, Henderson, and Mitchell came up with this idea that, you know, they sort of define feedback as sort of an interactive dialogic process, right? So that's sort of this ongoing dialogue with your students. And I think that's kind of an important um, thing to remember because um, it is, 
you know, something that you're sort of building a relationship with your students, okay? And, um, you know, today and, you know, with feedback and what we're really going to be focusing on is sort of the formative aspects of feedback, right? Because th these are, this is a way that we're, we're helping our students learn, right? Um, and sort of that formative feedback is really where the learning is taking place. Um, but what they did in their study was they came up um, or they, they sort of generated this list of uh, attributes that um, they felt described feedback or that were present in good feedback. Now, um, keep in mind that, you know, feedback is a process. So it's going to be different for everyone, right? So these attributes may be present, you know, to greater or lesser degrees, depending on who you're talking with, um, who you're giving feedback to, you know, the type of course. I mean, there are a lot of factors that go in to sort of um, influencing what kind of feedback you're going to be giving your students. Um, and so it's important to remember that, you know, there's no one, I guess, formula that works. Um, and it really is kind of about, um, you know, connecting with your students. Um, but, you know, they, di they do have several of these aspects, which like, um, you know, like I said, they, they describe it as a process, it, meaning that it takes time to develop, takes time to, you know, you've got to put time in to maintain this, this process of feedback, and it's, it's going to require a lot of different steps, okay? Um, another thing they identified was that feedback needs to be criteria-based. Um, you know, it has to be the standards that you're expecting your students to uh, adhere to need to be understood, right? And uh, for example, you know, rubrics are a great way to communicate that. Um, but it is very important that, you know, everybody understands what they're, you know, what you're talking about. What do you expect out of your students? Okay. You want um, multiple sources of evidence. Okay. Um, I know in sometimes as teachers, it's, it's easy to sort of want to correct everything and, you know, and talk about all the mistakes, but really that can be overwhelming for students. So what you want to do is sort of um, give feedback on the, on the, on the things that you see occurring most frequently, I guess. Um, and that is something that, you know, is important to remember. Like if you, you know, if a student makes, you know, one spelling error, that's maybe not a big deal. But if they make several sp spelling errors, then maybe that's something you want to bring up. Okay. Uh, this next one being it being desired by the recipient, um, that kind of, I guess, is a, a little bit common sense. I mean, if somebody doesn't want to listen to what you have to say, feedback is not going to be effective. Um, but I think it is safe to assume that, you know, students are taking your class, so they must want some sort of feedback um, on their performance. Um, so I think, you, you know, you can feel safe that most of your students are at least showing up with a desire to hear what you know, your feedback. Um, but again, you know, this is, is a, a relationship. So, you know, there may be a time when your student kind of closes off to you. So just be, be on the alert, be aware of that. Um, this is an important one, the timeliness, right? Feedback does need to be timely. Um, sooner being better. Uh, I, I kind of think of it in terms of, you know, when you're training uh, a pet, it like, my dog, you know, it's very important that if there's a behavior that I want to correct or encourage that I do it right away, right? Because otherwise my dog doesn't really understand why it's being praised or disciplined. So um, it's important, you know, to get to it quickly. Obviously you're dealing with humans, so it's a little different, but you know, you don't need to rush, but it does need to be timely. Right, because your students are, um, they're, you know, they're probably taking several classes, so they're task, switch, task switching a lot. Um, and, you know, if you give feedback within a week, you know, that's great. But, you know, if it stretches out longer, then chances are, you know, your students may have sort of 
you know, the, the paper or whatever you're giving them assignment, you know, was done so long ago, they may, it may take them some time to sort of remember exactly what was going on. Um, so just keep in mind that, you know, getting feedback to your students quickly is important. Um, this next one, it being tailored to the individual, um, that's something I already mentioned. Um, but you know, you as the instructor are, uh, you know your students better than anyone else. So, um, you know, you are in the best position to make sure that, you know, feedback is um, appropriate to the individual and for the course. Uh, now this next one, frequent frequency or having frequent feedback, um, this again, I think is is something that's helpful, right? It's easier to sort of digest um, a lot of small bites as opposed to one big giant bite of feedback, right? So um, you may be better off, you know, just taking quick little, um, you know, just quick little feedback or giving quick and short feedback to your students, either, you know, verbally or, written, um, but just kind of quick hits, things that, you know, they can take action on. You want it to be future focused, right? Because as I mentioned before, we're talking about the formative sort of aspects of feedback, or that's what we're using the feedback for is to help our students improve. So, you know, always be looking towards the future, right? Um, and I think this next one is very important uh, in that you know, you, there needs to be sort of a reciprocal nature. Um, this is a process and it is sort of a relationship that you are building with your students. So you need to be willing to accept um, feedback from the students, both written and sort of what you're seeing from the data, I would say. Um, so just keep in mind that it is, it's sort of a two-way street, right? It's, it's not you just, you know, assessing a student and moving on, you, you know, you need to have a conversation sort of and, and start this dialogue that, you know, where they can feel comfortable to ask questions or give feedback um, on what they're seeing. Now, um, these last, this last, or these last two here are the first one involving skillful interaction. I think that goes without saying, um, as with, you know, and anything involving humans, right? It's important for you to be sensitive to uh, what you're saying. And, you know, different people react differently depending on the situation, depending on their personality. So it's important to take in all those factors, right? Um, you may have some students that are okay with, with you just being very blunt and direct with your feedback, but there may be other students who that approach uh, is hurtful, right? It, that is maybe something that it, that they don't react well to. So make sure that you are, um, you know, sort of looking at your students holistically and, you know, tailoring feedback so that it best meets their needs. Um, and this uh, last one, multidimensional, um, that sort of, um, goes along with sort of this relationship idea, right? You're trying to develop a relationship. So you need to engage your students in more than one way. Um, that's just, you know, that will just help you build a stronger relationship and then, you know, hopefully um, make your feedback even better. All right, um, so. And, all right. <clears throat> okay, now, um, the thing is, is annotate cannot help you with all of these feedback attributes, okay, but it can help you with several of them. Um, I think the ones it can help the most with are these four right here. Um, you know, annotate makes it easier. Um, and quicker for you to add comments and things like that while you're grading. So that will help your timeliness um, because you can add, um, you know, text, you can add, uh, you can draw on the pages, you can just add all, we'll get into, we'll show you some of the tools, but you really can create a unique uh, and experience for each of your uh, 
students, okay? Um, and again, this is gonna help you write the, the tool itself because it will uh, save you some time is gonna enable you then to offer more frequent feedback, right? And that's gonna be helpful. Um, and another nice thing about the annotate tool itself is that it keeps track of your annotations and stuff. So this can help you sort of identify those uh, multiple, you know, sort of that multiple source aspect. So you can identify uh, and have data that's, you know, in multiple places where it's like, hey, you did this in, in these three, four spots. So, you know, this is something that we need to address. So that's just a little bit about that. Any questions before I move on to the annotate tools? Ah, yes. Thank you, Alicia. The uh, annotate is available in both views. Um, and actually that's a great segue. Thank you very much because that's where I'm going next. Okay. Um, Blackboard annotate is available in both the original, which, um, you'll see over here, and the ultra course view, which is down here. Um, the grading panel in both is on the right over here, um, which that's really the only difference you're gonna see. Um, the actual use and the annotate space itself, which is right here, um, where you see the document, that's the same in both views. So um, really it operates the same no matter what view you're in. Excellent question. All right, moving on. Um, so what we're gonna be focused on really are the annotate tools, which is um, located in this bar up here at the top, which let's move on here. Um, and so this bar here, um, it's divided into two sections, essentially. You've got the document view settings on the left and the, the tools on the right. Um, we are not gonna be talking about um, everything today uh, like most of these document view settings uh, we won't discuss because you know this this stuff is all pretty standard um, in any software you're in so um, you know you can navigate to the different pages and things like that uh, you know it's the same as would be in a word document or whatever but this sidebar thing over here is something we're going to be talking about um, <clears throat> Uh, another, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, also then on the tool side over here, there are a couple again, um, common tools that are used like the print icon, uh, you know, the download and the search. Um, those are pretty standard tools that are available in a lot of different um, software. So we won't really be discussing that, but we will be talking about the annotation tools, the comment feature, and then this library. Um, but first, let's start with our uh, sidebar. Now, the, the sidebar is nice because what that will do, um, and I don't know if you noticed it in my earlier view here, um, there is no sidebar, right? You got to click that to toggle the sidebar icon, which is right over here, um, or all the way on the left there. Um, but you'll toggle that icon to turn on the sidebar. Um, you have a couple of different options, um, but the ones you'll probably use the most are thumbnails and annotations. The thumbnails are nice um, because as you can see, that's what it's set on now. Um, it shows you the, you know, the document in smaller form, it's a navigation thing. You can scroll through the document and navigate to different portions fairly quickly. Um, and this annotation, um, sidebar, if you click on that, what that will do is it'll list all the annotations you've made in this document. Um, so using, you know, any of these annotation tools that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, one thing it does not do is um, list the comments that you insert. So that's kind of a separate thing. But um, as far as like um, adding things to the document in terms of uh, the, some of these other annotation tools, they will show up on this annotation sidebar. And what you can do <clears throat> is, you know, you can use that to look through quickly to see if you're making um, annotations that 
um, you know, are going to point to something occurring more than once. Um, another thing you do is use it to, uh, you know, delete, like if you, you have an annotation you want to take out, you can use the sidebar um, to delete it with the trash can icon. Um, <clears throat> but those are probably the tool you will uh, reuse the most. Um, one thing I do want to mention too is um, with the, um, in the grading view, sometimes it's important to um, adjust your um, Zoom in either the browser or in Annotate. And depending on whether or not you're in um, Original or Ultra, it works a little differently. But I will just tell you that um, adjusting your uh, browser Zoom, either up or down, will help you um, if you're finding that the that when you get into annotate it it's like it's not visible it's either too big or too small um so i i would you know that's just a little side note we can talk more about that later if you have questions all right so moving on we're going to talk about then some of our other annotation tools um <clears throat> and um so by clicking the and on the right side there's that box with the pencil in it that's how you get to the annotation tools when you click um, annotation tools, uh, it will pull up this um, pen here and you'll, you'll see this bar show up um, and you can adjust, you can either use a pen, uh, a brush or an eraser. Um, these are sort of your freehand drawing tools, they call them. You can adjust them, um, you know, for color, you can um, create different thicknesses, you can adjust the opacity. There's even a blend mode. I'm not sure exactly why you'd use that. Um, but uh, one thing is, is that when you click, <clears throat> excuse me, and select a tool, um, you'll see this gray bar here underneath. Um, and that is the bar that allows you then to sort of make adjustments to that particular tool. Okay. So, um, and those options are going to be a little different depending on which tool you've selected. So right here, <clears throat> um, We've got the the color and stuff tools that you can select, but um, it will be different depending on which annotation you, tool you are attempting to use. Uh, moving on, so once, oops, freehand drawing tools. Um, next um, is this um, images and stamps. So you can see right here, this little image, if you click that triangle, um, you get a choice. You can either insert an image um, or a stamp. Um, not sure why you would put images into a student document um, unless you had something pre-made. Um, these stamps are kind of useful. Um, some of them are uh, pre-made. So uh, you've got things, you know, like a check mark or a, a revise, things like that, um, that you can use, or you can create custom stamps. Uh, the custom stamps are one-offs, so um, you can't save them. But um, a nice thing about them is that you can include a time and a date stamp if you'd like. Um, some of the pre-made stamps already have a time and date stamp included. Um, and one of the nice things about stamps, and this is a new feature that they recently added, um, is that you can now add comments to your stamps. So, for example, if you uh, stamped, let's say you had a student uh, send you a draft of a paper and you either, you know, stamp it as, you know, approved or not approved or say a proposal, um, you know, you can also attach a note. So you can um, not only put that stamp in there, but you can off, you know, you can use the note to provide some explanation, you know, like perhaps, you know, you, I need, you know, you need to, didn't include your list of resources or whatever. Um, so that, you know, you can sort of use that as sort of that in part of that feedback loop that with your students. Okay, next up um, is, and you can see here, we've got the text box. Um, that is pretty similar. Um, it's, you know, it's just, it's a standard text box. You put it in, you, uh, and you can type inside it. Um, and then next to that are, is this lines and shapes tool. <clears throat> That's very similar to the lines and shapes you would add in Word or 
PowerPoint, anything like that, pretty much works the same way. Um, you can adjust them for color and thickness. Um, now, and, and you know, you can use these, these tools in different ways, right? To, and it's kind of sort of up to you. Like um, one thing you can, I think you could do is you can, you can sort of color code, right? So if you have um, a list, you know, or say a student turns in a paper, um, you know, you could actually highlight, and we'll talk about that tool later. Um, for example, you could highlight the sections in green that you're like, hey, this is good to go. You know, highlight sections in yellow that's like, man, you need some improvements here. And sections in red where it's like, oh boy, you <laughs> need to start over. Or, you know, this needs to be completely reworked. You know, it's kind of up to you. Um, as I said, what, you know, what you're doing is trying to create this dialogue with your students. Um, and sort of some of these tools so you can create um, timely feedback. Okay, and now the next one is this comment feature, and I'm gonna spend a little more time on this because there are actually three different ways you can add comments in Annotate. Um, the the most important thing I want to say this is you got to click save. Um, if you don't click save on your comments, um, they won't stick around. And if you click out of there um, and move on to the next uh, paper or student to grade, um, your comments will not be saved. Um, so just make sure you're clicking save. But um, if you use this tool right here, this allows you to add a comment exactly where you want it. Um, it's what I would call sort of a spot comment. Um, so you can, and you can see here, um, I've got some different ones um, sort of located in different spots. It's where, you know, you can, what all a student has to do is click on that. And, you know, you can add just quick, short comments, you know, um, again, you know, lots of small feedback, not big giant feedback. So, you know, this is another way you can create sort of that quick little ongoing dialogue with your students um, as far as the feedback is concerned. Um, but this one works, you know, very similar to the comment tool in uh, Word or some of these other word processing softwares, um, but it's very useful. The next way um, to add comments then is through the comment library. Um, and that's the little books on the side. You'll click that icon. This um, is, I, I really like this tool um, in part because um, I was at uh, the Blackboard, uh, whatever it is, the convention where they have everybody show up. And um, I actually sat through a little um, developing session where they were taking ideas and um, I, I I suggested having canned comments, like comments that were ready to go. Now it ended up, they turned it into something a little different than what I had envisioned, but I do like this because it does allow you to create comments of your own, um, stuff that you're using frequently, right? So you don't have to type it out every time. Um, and um, just as an example, like, um, you know, if, if you're having students write term papers, perhaps they're forgetting citations. So rather than having to um, add a, you know, type in, hey, you need a citation here, every single time you can use sort of these canned comments, you know, you could create one and just insert it um, very quickly and easily. So to add, oh, go ahead, Brooke, you got a question? Yeah, do you know if you can do this in the original Blackboard course view? Um, yeah, this this annotate um, is available in both course views, so you're you can add the comments. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and another nice thing about this um, feature is that then these any of these uh, sort of um, comments you add to your library are available in your other courses as well, I believe. So anytime you're sort of in annotate, your your canned comments will be available. Um, you can search your con your library to find comments if you've got more than a few, um, and then to place them in a in the student work, um, uh, it's as simple as just clicking those three dots, right, the ellipsis, um, and clicking place comment. 
um, you then click where you want the comment to go and it's um, automatically added for you. Um, you can also edit or delete your comments from here. Um, but I, you know, just having some of these available, I think is, is another great time saver, um, which is gonna allow you then, you know, to devote your time to, you know, whatever you need to do, but you, you know, you, it's gonna allow you then to um, respond to students quickly. And that is, as we know, great for feedback. Uh, and finally, this um, last way to add a comment is by highlighting text. And um, when you highlight text inside the annotate tool, um, inside a student paper, um, what it does is it automatically pulls up this menu um, where you can you know, adjust the highlighting color, um, but you can also add underlines, squiggle underlines, strike throughs, and a comment. So what that does then is it ties that comment to that highlighted section of text. Just, um, you know, it's just another way to, again, focus in on what you're um, giving your feedback on so the student is clear um, on what, is, what, you're, what you're saying. Another thing too is like, um, you know, you could, as I said, you know, sort of use this squiggle underline thing, like uh, the same way Word does, right? Like um, you could use a red squiggle underline for spelling errors, or you could use a green squiggle underline for um, grammar problems. You know, it's sort of up to you. I think, um, you know, you, you know your students better than anyone else. So, um, you know, you just sort of need, and yourself too, because obviously these things need to work for both um, both parties, right? It's, you know, it's like feed, feedback is great for students, but it's no good if it, if you're spending all of your time creating feedback for your students, right? This, ha this annotate tool has to help you as well as the students. So always keep that in mind. Okay, um, now once, uh, obviously, sometimes you're gonna add things, you may need to remove them. Um, there are a couple of ways to do this. One, as I mentioned, you can go to the annotation sidebar um, and remove annotations from there. You can also um, click on the annotation itself in the document um, and that'll bring up this gray bar. Now, depending on which annotation you've selected, um, it will, you know, give you different options, but always on the left, you're gonna have that trash can and that just gets rid of your comment. All right, so that's really all I've got um, in terms of my demo. Um, I was gonna also pop in and show you a, um, sort of how this looks in Ultra. Um, let me, give me a second just to share my screen. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know at this time. Okay. All right, can everybody see that okay? Yep, looks like that looks good. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's something um, I forgot to mention about Annotate. Um, it, I think it times you out after about an hour. So um, I, I opened this earlier to have it ready. It's obviously a little too early. So um, I'll just hop back out here um, and come back into my preview here. Um, and as you can see, this is this is sort of the annotate view. This is in um, the ultra course view. Um, but you can see I've got a couple of annotations here. Um, another thing, it's it was it's important to remember um, that there can sometimes be a little um, formatting change when this gets converted to be put in this annotate window. So if um, you are, you know, if part of what you are assessing students on um, 
is related to formatting, you can download the original file so that you can see the formatting in its natural or you know the way the student intended it. Um, just a quick little, right? So you can see um, I've got a couple of things here. Um, first off is just the drawing tool, which I've used here. Um, you can see when I click on that, <clears throat> it gives me these different options. I can create you know, the different sizes. I can adjust the opacity. I can change my tools. Um, but down here, I, I do kind of want to show you because I thought this was pretty cool. Um, and that is this stamp. That's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. Um, and so you can put in these stamps, like say I'm going to stamp draft, and boom, there it is, right? Um, but what I really like is if you select this, you can see it's got this little icon over here. And if you click that, that allows you to add a note, right? So you can say, hey, you know, you need to adjust this or whatever. Um, and you can, you can throw these away with the trash can if you don't like them. Um, but I think that's a great way to help um, add feedback. Um, like I said, you can add images. I'm not sure why you would want to. Um, I will show you this thing over here. Um, I've only got the one, this one only has one page, but um, actually I need to adjust this a little bit. But if I go to the annotation, oops, if I go to the annotation sidebar, what you can see then is I've got all of these uh, different things that I've put in here um, are listed here. Now you can see these, you know, it gives me a date, but it doesn't give me a time. <clears throat> um, but you can easily then remove them, any of these annotations simply by clicking the trash can, it'll ask you, hey, are you sure? You say, yep, delete, and then away it goes. Um, as I mentioned, it does not include your comments. So you can see, like I've added a comment here. Um, this comment is right here, but um, you can always open it up to add to it or um, add more comments. I believe students can also respond to your comments through here. Um, then it, you will need to click the reply in order to save it. Um, so that's another way you can add these comments quickly. Um, hopefully, like I said, you, you need to make sure this works for you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One thing I do want to mention too while I'm here um, is when you open this annotate window, you've got a few different scroll bars here. Um, you've got this scroll bar all the way on the right, which moves the entire page up and down. Um, you've got this sort of middle scroll bar, which will move um, this sort of submission window up and down. Um, and then you've also got this scroll bar here inside the annotate window, which moves you up and down through the paper um, or whatever it, the document, I should say, whatever you're in here. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, make sure you're clicking the correct um, scroll bar because if like, for example, if you, if you put this all the way down here, um, you know, that can affect how you're seeing. So you may want to see uh, the assignment content, right? So if you click on this up here, um, that'll show your instructions and things like that. Um, if you need to reference them, um, and then you can also click this thing. This is just the submission window. So if you need to minimize that. Um, but, you know, hopefully, like I said, these these tools, you can use them in a lot of different ways um, to sort of add comments um, and give feedback to your students. Um, like for example, the text box, right? I just click in here and I start typing, nice job. Uh, I need to click out in order to save it. It won't show up for the students until I do. Um, but again, you know, there are, many, many different ways that you can add, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can add comments for your students. So, all right, so any questions? Stop sharing here. Oops. 
All right. Well, if there are no questions, I just need to wrap up here. So if you'll bear with me for just a moment. Got to do my plug for the center and whatnot. So um, as I said, if you do need help with any of this stuff or you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, don't, you know, um, you can also contact the center. Um, here's my information here. So um, it will also come in my wrap up email that I will send out when the recording is available. Um, if you do need assistance, um, you can, and you can't get a hold of me, you can always contact the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, either at CITL at NIU.edu, that's our uh, text question form, or you can contact the Center by phone. Um, you can also schedule consultations with our staff. So, um, you know, we're always available. So if you have um, sort of specific questions, especially, you know, if, if you're really, um, you know, trying to figure out how to um, sort of arrange your course or just whatever questions you might have, um, please feel free to schedule a consultation either online or by phone. Um, and of course, we're always offering workshops. Um, we do sort of have this um, schedule going on. We go, <clears throat> excuse me, we have um, Teaching Tuesday, which are, um, our workshops tend to be a little more focused on the pedagogy and other aspects of teaching like that. Um, our Wisdom Wednesdays, which are more um, uh, sort of sort of an opportunity to sort of share some experience from either uh, mentors or colleagues. We have book chats, things like that. Um, and then there uh, is Technology Thursday, which is where you get things like this, where we talk really more about the tools and Blackboard and how to use them. Um, Another way you can contact us is right on this institution page in Blackboard. So when you log in, um, you should see right at the top, right? You should have this um, resources for flexible teaching box because you are instructors. So um, you can register for a workshop by clicking that link there or schedule a consultation with us by clicking that link right there. Um, so please feel free to do so. We are available for you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So just, you know, use us. That's what we're here for, um, especially if you're new to Blackboard. Um, you know, we do have not only are there a lot of um, resources available on our website, but we are here to help you uh, sort through the, some of it. You know, it is, there's a lot to take in. Um, and it can get kind of confusing, um, especially because we, you know, we have two different versions. We have the original and the ultra view. So do not hesitate to reach out to either myself or the center for help when you need it. But, um, all right, well, that's really all I have. So um, I can either give you your 10 to 12 minutes back, um, but I'm more than happy to hang here. If you have questions about this or anything else, um, <clears throat> more than happy to answer them at this time. Um, and you know, we can run through some, so I can, you know, I can show you stuff, live demo, whatever you feel would be helpful. I'm gonna pop off, but thank you. And I sure. think the most useful thing that I learned was that you can save comments to like add to multiple students' documents because that will save me so much time. Yes. <laughs> so that, that's huge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that, honestly, this is one thing I really do like about Blackboard is that they've been pretty responsive to us. Um, and Ultra does have some, issues at times, but they are constantly improving it. It keeps getting better. Um, and you know, that honestly is one way that I think it, it got a lot better. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. Sure. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, well, I'm, I, I have general Blackboard questions, but I do have a consultation um actually in an hour um oh okay so Great. hopefully uh, while i know i can't get everything answered i may be able to get some things answered mm -hmm. um i guess the one thing i can 
ask if you don't mind if it's not about annotate per se, but um, <laughs> I, the the whole idea of the grade 